Welcome to the Las Lunas New Mexico Museum of Heritage and Arts. We are proud to share with you the recent exhibition, Ayer, Hoy y Mañana, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. This exhibition focuses on 64 renowned artists working today in New Mexico. I'm Nicholas Otero, curator and contributor to the exhibition Ayer, Hoy y Mañana. This incredible exhibition showcases the best of traditional and contemporary Hispanic folk art. Join me as we explore these art forms. One of the first significant art forms that's featured in this exhibition is that of the bulto. A bulto is a three-dimensional carving that is typically done using chisels and other tools that the artist may choose to use to execute a fine carving of either the saints, angels, or the Virgin Mary. Typically, these bultos have removable parts that go alongside them. We tend to call those attributes or iconography. This representation of Santa Elena by artist Alcario Otero is a fine representation of what a traditional New Mexico santo typically looks like. This piece depicts Santa Elena holding the three nails that were used in the crucifixion. She also holds in her left hand the crucifix with the crown of thorns. It is believed that Santa Elena was the first to find the relic of the Holy Cross. She comes from nobility, so typically you will see her with a crown on top of her head. What makes this carving a remarkable representation of a traditional New Mexico Santo is the use of natural pigments and traditional materials such as cottonwood root. Another incredible artist working today is Adan Cariaga. In this particular image, Adan has decided to represent Our Lady of Guadalupe, finally executed with a beautiful robe using the natural pigment cochineal. Our Lady of Guadalupe stands proudly within a beautiful nicho. The nicho surrounds her halo, and at the top, an angel is rested looking over her. The three carvings of the archangels by Adan Cariaga are masterful compositions that show an enormous amount of detail. These pieces are unique and spectacular because they have the different iconography that's associated with each angel. For example, St. Michael has the scales of judgment that he holds between good and evil. He also holds the sword as he is one of the top battlefield angels of the heavens. Each of these archangels has a very stylized way of representation. For example, Saint Michael has a plume of cloth on each side of his legs rising up from his azurite colored boots. Adan has chosen to represent these angels in a very stoic and strong representation. Each of them has beautifully stylized hair that are painted using black walnut. Their wings that are attached to their backs are also beautiful in that they are all alike in size. The San Gabriel, which holds the white lily, is a beautiful depiction in which the angel is reaching out to the viewer. Typically, you'll see bultos on top of stands so as to prop them up and give them their glory in presentation. The other representation is of San Rafael. He holds a gourd. San Rafael is also holding the fish, which makes him the patron saint of fishermen. He's typically seen as a guardian angel. Another traditional art form is that of the Cordova style of carving. Cordova style carvers typically also carve bultos, but unlike their counterparts to the traditional, these bultos are not painted. These incredible bultos and figurines that come from the area of northern New Mexico called Cordova are typically fashioned using the chip carving method where the artist will carve away intricate details and accent those details with cedar. The contrast between the aspen and the cedar allows for the artist to produce a varied design on the mantles of these carvings. One of the most whimsical and fascinating traditions of the Cordova style of carving is the production of beautiful little creatures found in New Mexico. Typically, Cordova style artists will carve little figurines of burros, which are donkeys, hummingbirds, and sheep, 
and often little miniature crosses are a popular item of the Cordova carver's repertoire. Ronda Crespin is known as one of the foremost carvers of traditional bultos. She, like many other women, are taking on the tradition of carving and are representing the carvers very well. What's interesting about the women carvers of the Spanish colonial traditions is that they too have a unique place in the history of carving santos. Some, if not all, give their male counterparts quite a run for their money as it pertains to the quality and skill level that they're able to represent in their carvings. Rhonda Crespin, who is very well known for her carvings, often does an innovative approach as it pertains to the stance of her images. For example, the Immaculate Conception Bulto, which she carves, is a finely detailed composition that shows the Virgin Mary with finely carved hair and a stance that is not typical of New Mexico Santos. This stance is considered a contrapasso stance in which the Virgin Mary leans to one side, giving an indentation or bend out of the fabric from her knee. Another incredible image by Rhonda Crispin is that of the carving of St. Anthony. This two and a half foot sculpture is a beautiful representation of the Franciscan saint. He stands on top of a beautiful base represented by a white lily. He holds a book as a symbol of theology and has a roped, knotted cord around his waist. Another fine example of Rhonda Crispin's work is that of St. Michael the Archangel. The Archangel is represented holding a shield for battle. That is made out of tin, a traditional art form as well. In addition, he also holds a sword in combat. Kateri Tikawitha is known as Lily of the Mohawks, so typically you'll see her depicted with a white lily in her hands. What's unique about this composition by Victor Goled is that he has depicted her with immense detail noting the detail on her head where it shows the highly stylized beadwork that the Lily of the Mohawks was known for. This piece is a remarkable contribution to the exhibition because it represents the indigenous peoples of not all around the world but also here locally of the 19 Pueblos. Charlie Carrillo is known as one of the foremost carvers of traditional New Mexico Santos. Here in this depiction, he has chosen to show Our Lady of Rosary in the traditional hollow frame style of bulto carving. Typically, these bultos were left hollow on the interior from the waist down, so as to allow them to be carried lightly in procession. This unique piece also has gesso relief as a technique that's used around her mantle. In her left arm, she also holds the Christ child who is depicted in the color red, which is symbolic of the sacrifice of blood. This little bulto is also removable from the image of the saint. In this saint's hands are also part of her important attributes, which is the rosary. Charlie Carrillo chose to include an antique rosary made of jade that strings from one hand to the other. If you were to tap on the dress of the image, you will notice that it's a hollow, almost like drum sound. Typically, hollow frame bultos are made in a very complicated manner. Usually wood slats are extended from the waist down to the base of the image. From there, the artist is able to stretch across either a canvas or a hide. Typically, the artist has also the opportunity to paint beautiful ornamentation on the dress. In this particular image of Our Lady of the Rosary, you'll notice that there is a crescent moon at the base of her dress. This is a typical attribute of the Virgin Mary as is referenced in the Bible. One of our important artists that we have featured in this exhibition is that of Jean Anaya Moya. The versatility that she's able to express in the various art forms that she does is incredible. This particular piece titled San Isidro en Toda Su Gloria or San Isidro in all of his glory, is a relief carving that took Jean two years to complete. As you can imagine, the challenge of going from a flat plane into a three-dimensional plane is quite significant. What's incredible about this particular piece is it's a representation of San Isidro, 
who is also the patron saint of farmers and agriculture. So it is no mystery as to why Jean would include wheat straw design around the frame of San Isidro, in addition to a beautiful, lively scene of the waters gurgling down the stream from an old chapel. The farmer himself is also illustrated in very torn and weathered clothing, thus giving the impression that this farmer has been working very hard on his farm. Another example of Gina Naya Moya's incredible relief work is that of Our Lady of Guadalupe. This piece, carved from a single piece of wood, depicts the traditional and popular Virgin Mary with the angel at her feet. Furthermore, Jean's incredible depiction of the crucifixion, or Christ on the cross, is a great example of how she has chosen to combine multiple media. The inclusion of straw around the perimeter of the cross only highlights the significance and passion of this piece. Also included in the exhibition are beautiful contemporary expressions done by artists who have the foundation of the traditional but have chosen to take their work in a whole new and exciting direction. Perhaps they've evolved from the traditional materials to depicting social ills in society or political themes. This piece by Arthur Lopez is a play on words titled Murder Witnesses, where you see two crows on a fence post witnessing the death of one of their own shot by shotgun shells. The play on words is that a group of crows is witnessing the murder of one of their own by a hunter. And a group of crows is called a murder of crows. Nicholas Herrera is one of our most noted artists in the exhibition. Here he has chosen to depict Elijah going to heaven by showing Elijah in a chariot that is painted very much like the lowriders of northern New Mexico. Nicolas Herrera comes from El Rito, New Mexico, which is a small town north of Santa Fe. Nick Herrera's work is very popular as he also explores social commentary and political themes in his work. Elijah holds the reins made of leather, guiding the horse into heaven. A fascinating piece by Nicolas Herrera in the exhibition is known as the Sacred Heart Retablo that he produced in 2010. What makes Nick Herrera so remarkable is that he uses found objects in the construction of his work. This piece, for example, has barbed wire sticking out around the perimeter of the Sacred Heart of Christ. Nick Herrera is very well known for his bright and electric colors. Although Luis Tapia's foundation is the traditional Spanish colonial art, he has evolved to produce carvings that are very much similar to the bultos that we see in churches today. In this particular image, he's chosen to represent a pachuco who is shown in traditional dress from the 1950s. Luis Tapia's ode to the Chicano lifestyle is something that's a constant in his portfolio of work. In Luis Tapia's depiction of Abuela, he is able to communicate the multi-generational effects of drug abuse and alcohol into his work. In this composition, Tapia shows a grandmother taking her grandchild by the hand through what appears to be a very dysfunctional scene. Littered on the road or on the sidewalk of this scene are empty wine and beer bottles. On the opposite side of this composition is a depiction of what appears to be Mother Nature in her truest element. Surrounding her around the rainbow is the culture that we currently live in. Perhaps this is a commentary to our current society. This is a beautiful bulto by Carlos Otero, who is a very well-known santero from the Las Lunas area. This particular bulto is a depiction of San Isidro, the patron saint of farmers. As you can see on his shoulder, he holds a sack of seed. Typically, San Isidro will be shown with an angel plowing his fields and doing his daily work for him as he is in prayer. The angel in this composition is shown with a tilted pose to his body posture. This is an innovative approach to depicting the angel in San Isidro's field. The oxen, which are plowing the field, are depicted with the traditional plow. On the hind of each of the oxen is the actual brand of Carlos Otero. Carlos Otero's bulto is displayed in a beautiful 
ornate tin nicho that was made by Christine Montano Carey. This beautiful nicho has relief aspects to it on the base. One of the incredible opportunities that we had in this exhibition was showing the multi-generational influence of one artist to the other. In this case, it is Joshua Otero, the grandson of Carlos Otero, who is now carrying on the tradition of painting and carving santos. This particular piece is San Acasio, who is the patron saint of military and those involved in the various service. San Acasio is depicted with palm branches on each side, in addition to two soldiers that stand flanking him. The palm branches that are depicted are a traditional element representing martyrdom of the saint. Also on the foot of the cross is a drum symbolizing the military entrance or arrival. This is a beautiful depiction of Santa Cecilia by Lori Garcia. Lori Garcia has chosen to bridge the contemporary with the traditional in her composition of Santa Cecilia. As you can see, she is flanked by two mariachi musicians on either side of her as she sings beautifully to the heavens. Lori Garcia is also known as one of the top female carvers in the Santo tradition. This large scale composition encompasses Santa Cecilia underneath a beautifully carved Nicho design that says, Musica del Cielo, Santa Cecilia Canta, or Music of Heaven, Saint Cecilia Sings. Arthur Lopez is one of the highly regarded traditional and contemporary Santeros working today. In this composition, Arthur has gone for a much more realistic representation of Saint Francis. Saint Francis here is shown with two birds, one holding a traditional New Mexican staple food, the piñon. Saint Francis is traditionally shown with a Franciscan blue robe, and on this particular piece he has a beautiful image of Christ crucified around his neck. Saint Francis is known as the patron of ecology and animals alike. In this representation, Arthur Lopez shows a beautiful bust of Saint Francis atop a scene of New Mexico landscape. This particular piece is incredible in that it also represents the much more academic style of representation of the saints. He is shown with a silver leaf halo behind him and is represented looking straight on. For Byron Martinez, the hand seems to be a typical theme in his work. In the Immaculate Heart of Mary, this piece represents the heart of the Virgin Mary. Typical of her iconography, the white lilies surround the heart with a dagger piercing the side of the heart. Byron has chosen to depict the blood dripping from the natural wood grain onto the hand using cedar. This is an incredible composition that is movable and functional. Byron Martinez comes from Chimaya, New Mexico. In his piece, Mama's Worst Nightmare, he is able to tackle the social issues that are facing individuals today. His depiction of a needle, which is constructed out of using filigree silver work, is a collaborative piece by three artists. Rachel Montoya, who produced the filigree needle, and Valerie Vigil, who produced the rosary that is wrapped around the hand. Byron Martinez typically does not paint his carvings and leaves them in their natural wood grain element. Onofre Lucero is a very well-known santero who's chosen to depict Nuestra Señora de los Dolores, or Our Lady of Sorrows. This intricately carved bulto is a beautiful representation of the Virgin Mary. Onofre has chosen to incorporate filigree jewelry into his composition. As you can see, the earrings that are hanging on the Virgin's ears are made of filigree silver. In addition to that, the dagger that pierced her breast is also produced using filigree jewelry. One of the unique things about Onofre's work is that he continuously sketches ideas and designs that he can incorporate into his carvings. Every single portion of his composition is finely carved and painted. Typically, you'll see painted designs on the Virgin Mary's mantle. What's unique about Onofre's work is that he's chosen to carve out his designs in a three-dimensional manner, giving them a relief aspect. This is a bulto that is carved by Master Santero, Felix Lopez. Felix Lopez is from Española, New Mexico. This particular image is a depiction of Our Lady of Peace. 
One of her main attributes that tells us so is the dove that is hand carved in her hand. She holds her hand in benediction pointing to the heavens. This is a remarkable piece in that it is animated. It can be moved and changed in its posture. This piece is also a hollow frame style bulto, which means that from the waist down, there is no solid carving, but rather wood slits that are then wrapped around with the canvas. On this beautiful dress, Felix has chosen to incorporate the traditional medium of straw applique. This piece is painted with natural pigments and is hand varnished with pignon sap and beeswax. Our Lady of Peace wears a crown on top of her head representing her royalty. Also typical is the blue color that is on her dress. Felix Lopez has chosen to depict St. Thomas Aquinas holding a book and feather which represents a stylus pen. On his chest is a sun-like shape that is shown with straw applique surrounding it. This piece is unique in that the saint's head is turned. Typically, traditional santos are very static and don't show any movement at all. Felix Lopez has chosen to represent an elongated St. Thomas Aquinas with a carved nicho that surrounds him. He is a solid piece of wood. Also worth noting is Felix's use of folds in his work. They have a lifelike quality and softness about them. Joseph Lopez, who is also a master carver in his own right, is the son of Felix Lopez. Joseph is very well known for his softness of execution of the faces in which he carves and paints. This particular piece shows Mary depicted in her traditional blue color with her red dress underneath. Mary holds her hands in anguish at the sorrow of knowing that her son will soon be crucified. This particular piece shows beautiful cascading folds that come from the wrists of Mary that exude a softness and pleasant representation of her. Joseph Lopez has also used straw applique to accent the Virgin Mary. As you'll notice on each side, there's a beautiful star that is placed on her shoulders. Mary cries in mourning with tears cascading down her cheek and is looking ever so soft. Keep in mind that this piece is carved from a single block of wood. The portrayal of the folds and carving within and around the face is quite a challenge for any carver. Traditional New Mexican retablos are like none other. In New Mexico, the tradition of retablos is a very unique one and that the same materials that are used for other santos are also used. Traditionally, retablos are done on flat, hand adzed wood panels. Many are constructed with frames, some will have tilted lunettes or carved rosettes at the top, and all are traditionally sealed with pignon sap varnish. Many of the retablos that are done today are done traditionally with a gessoed base. This gessoed base is where the artist would paint with his watercolor pigments or natural pigments, depending on the artist's preference. Some of the pieces included in the exhibition will have beautiful ornamentation that is around the perimeter of the retablo. For instance, a carved lunette or side design carved elements are also featured around the retablos to give them an added appeal. One could not discuss the topic of retablos without mentioning the name of Arlene Cisneros Sena. Arlene Sena has quickly become one of the most popular and highly collected santeros working in the tradition today. Arlene is very well known for her use of gold leaf on her images whether it's on a halo or a border accent. Arlene's style is considered very academic compared to the traditional retablos that are being produced today. In her compositions, you'll typically see a realism factor that goes into the drapery or clothing that the saints wear. Another added element or inspiring element of Arlene's work is the depiction of the saint's face. Typically, the eyes on her images are much larger and exaggerated. Many viewers and collectors connect with Arlene's work because of this very specific feature in her work. Her attempt at realism, whether it be through the hair, through the drapery, or any other aspect of composition, is something that many artists aspire to be like. 
In addition to her portrayal of female saints, Arlene's work is also popular for her portrayal of male saints. In this particular piece, you have San Isidro who holds a modern interpretation of the shovel. San Isidro is also shown alongside St. Francis, who is also a very popular New Mexican devotional subject. One of Arlene's distinguishing characteristics of her work is her attempt at realism. Many of her pieces involve the hollyhock as a symbol in her compositions. This particular piece is fascinating also because of the fact that it is depicting the holy pilgrimage shrine of Santuario de Chimayo in the background. This is a depiction of the Last Supper by Charlie Carrillo. In Spanish, we would call that Ultima Cena. In colonial times, there are no historic examples that survive that show this particular image. However, Charlie has decided to showcase this piece on an octagon style shape retablo. What makes this piece unique is the card frame that goes around the perimeter of the retablo. Typically, an artist will drill and wood dowel each of the pieces into the main frame of the piece in order to secure it. Charlie Carrillo has also decided to incorporate the use of gesso relief at the top lunette of this particular piece. Gesso relief is also a traditional media that is used in making santos. This depiction of the Last Supper shows the disciples around a table. A typical characteristic of the New Mexican retablo is the curtain-like feature that is usually at the top or around of a retablo. It is said that this is either a space filler for the artist or it is a way of revealing the image itself as a holy person to the viewer. A traditional art form that is also used by current santeros is the art form of gesso relief. Gesso relief is a natural extension from the flat plane surface that a traditional retablo artist would use. In this composition, titled San Miguel Archangel, you see Michael flanked by two angels on either side. Their names are illustrated in the cartouches beneath their feet, Gabriel and Raphael. The most significant image in the piece, however, would be St. Michael, as he is shown in relief form. His face protrudes out from the flat surface dramatically, and beneath his feet is a serpent and dragon. This is a collaborative piece between Alcario Otero and Federico Prudencio. Federico Prudencio is a highly skilled furniture maker, so the combination of the two media make this an exceptional representation. Because of the fact that this is a triptych, the piece is meant to function as an opened and closed representation of the three archangels. Marie Romero Cash is one of our highlighted artists in the exhibition. Marie never ceases to amaze us with her incredible compositions in which she illustrates various narratives. This particular piece illustrates the narratives of the plagues on Egypt. In this innovative expression of Marie Romero Cash, you see here that she illustrates the ten plagues of Egypt, which are scenes from the Old Testament. One of which that she illustrates is the plague of the frogs. This piece is a beautifully interactive piece in that you can open up each of the panels to reveal the narrative. In this case, you have the narrative of Noah gathering all of Earth's creatures in preparation for the flood. One of the fascinating components of this exhibition is the idea of showing younger artists that are working within the tradition. Many artists learn their skills of the traditional arts from either their parents or grandparents. Miley Torres Baker is one of the individuals who is currently working as a young artist at the age of 18. Recently, she journeyed into the adult market and was accepted as an artist to showcase with other master artists in the field. Vicente Teis is an artist who is also producing traditional New Mexican retablos. He's consciously chosen to evolve the subject matter, however, to include intricate compositions of wood framework in his pieces. Vicente enjoys using various types of metal leaf in order to produce his compositions. This particular piece is a depiction of Mary Magdalene holding the crucifix with an angel behind her. 
This piece is also innovative in that it is an interactive piece in which the doors slide open and close to reveal or hide the particular image. This collaboration between Byron Martinez and Nicholas Otero is a depiction of the Sacred Heart of Mary. We know this because of the white lilies that are portrayed in the relief carving done by Byron Martinez. Also part of the attribute of this particular piece is the sword that pierces the heart itself. This is a very highly evolved piece that shows a lot of intricate carving with both gesso relief and wood relief. On each side of the Sacred Heart, you see two generic angels that are depicted with gold leaf halos. The lunette at the top is also done in gold leaf and is a traditional element found on many retablos in Spanish colonial New Mexico. This is a uniquely interactive piece in that there is also a small rosary box located at the bottom of the piece. This beautiful retablo is a depiction of Our Lady of the Conquest by Roxanne Shaw Galindo and is also accented by artist Patricia Gurle Griego. The two artists have used their traditional mediums to combine in order to present this beautiful rendition of the Virgin Mary. Roxanne chooses to use the scraffito method of scratching or incising into the gesso panel to reveal various designs. In addition to the scraffito technique, Patricia Griego has also used the straw applique method to ornamentate the border of La Conquistadora. This process is a time-involved process that requires a tremendous amount of attention to detail. Catherine Robles Shaw is known as a very important and popular Santera. In this composition of Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, Catherine illustrates the narrative of the appearance of Our Lady of Guadalupe to the peasant Juan Diego. What makes this retablo unique is the narrative and storyline of the appearance of Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego. Each scene is highly detailed in depicting that narrative. Charlie Carrillo's depiction of San Pascual in a pickup truck is an innovative play on the old techniques while at the same time catching a much more contemporary audience. San Pascual was known as the Eucharistic bread maker of the Franciscan order. In this particular piece, you see a depiction of San Pascual holding a piece of Indian bread, also one of the many important cultures here in New Mexico. On the back of the pickup truck is a traditional orno or bread oven that is used in order to make bread. Hanging from the back of the truck is also a traditional bread paddle that was used to pull in and out the bread from the oven. This is from an incredible series of a spiritual pickup by Charlie Carrillo in which he depicts various images of saints in these traditional classic pickup trucks. Traditional Spanish colonial retablos typically have a very limited palette as it pertains to the colors that are used in a composition. So for example, it's not rare uh, to see a retablo that may have three or four colors and only those colors. Many of the colors that are used in painting retablos come from the earth or other natural substances like the bug cochineal. Indigo is a very popular color and it's a beautiful blue that is used on almost every single retablo made by any artist. Vermilion, which is a beautiful vibrant red, is also a color that is useful in depicting the Virgin Mary and other images that require that specific color. Other colors that are used, for example, may be what's called Santiago Green, which is a mineral deposit that's found in Placitas, New Mexico. It's believed that it wasn't until the railroad came into New Mexico that artists started to see a much more diversified palette that they could begin using. Some artists even using oils as a paint. The traditional palette used by retablo painters is sometimes muted or very pastel. Artists working today will use much more vibrant colors that aren't necessarily of the traditional vein. The use of violets and very vibrant blues and yellows is something that's common among contemporary santeros today. San Ramon Nanato, which is painted here by Andrew Montoya, is a typical depiction of Saint Raymond. What makes this piece unique and innovative is the incorporation of filigree silver as ornamentation to the border design. 
Catherine Robles Shaw is here depicting San Miguel the Archangel using the Enconchada method. The Enconchada method is a way of using shell as an accent in a particular devotional image. Here, St. Michael is detailed with that shell around his wings and on his drapery. This feature gives the image a much more luminescent appearance. The Enconchada method is something that is used or was used in colonial Spain. Catherine Robles Shaw has taken this method and made it her own as it pertains to the tradition of traditional New Mexico Santos. Tin work is an important and integral part of this exhibition. Making its appearance in New Mexico in the mid 1800s, tin work has been used for a variety of purposes. Often recycled from tin cans and other containers, it was not uncommon for tinsmiths to fashion these into ornate frames or other materials such as candle holders and sconces. Tin work has evolved into a beautiful and popular art form in New Mexico. Tin work is also known as poor man's silver. Many tinsmiths are easily identifiable based on their punch methods. Jason Baca has quickly become one of the most renowned tinsmiths working today. In this particular piece titled Mi Homenaje a los Maestros, or the work of the teachers, in this particular piece, Jason has executed a number of pattern designs on his tin work. With the incorporation of brass added on top of the regular tin work, Jason is able to show a much more varied composition in framing his lithograph. Often Jason will find historic or antique prints in order to frame with tin work. Jason Baca incorporates a variety of techniques in producing his tin work. In addition to the punching that he does onto the tin, he also forms tin and scores the designs into the work. Jimmy Madrid is also known as a prominent tinsmith working in New Mexico today. His particular style is called the Messias style in which the tin is painted and combed through on the back of glass. These glass pieces are framed within Jimmy's tin work and the tin work itself also has a very unique patina. Jimmy Madrid's work is identifiable based on his tin patterns and stamp work. It is typical of Jimmy to collaborate with his wife, Mary Jo Madrid, who sometimes paints images of saints that go inside of his tin work. Nicholas Madrid is the son of Jimmy Madrid, who also works in the Messiah style of tin work. Nick Madrid produces incredibly ornate mirror designs in which he uses multi layers of tin work in order to produce an incredible composition. Many of his works are highly detailed. He implements very unique stamp patterns as well as scoring techniques to accent his various designs. Jerry Montoya has quickly become known for his tin repujado or repose. Jerry Montoya himself has single-handedly developed a unique style that has become very popular and collectible in New Mexico. In this particular image of Los Tres Archangels, Jerry expresses the three different angels using this repujado technique. He flips the pieces back and forth in order to produce the images that are visible. In addition to that, he also uses a certain type of patina in order to dye his tin. This helps to bring about the different highlights that are produced within the composition. In this particular piece, he has also used the traditional retablo lunette at the top and on the sides and bottom. One of the most popular traditional art forms is also known as straw applique or encrusted straw. The two different styles involve the use of straw that is either imported or collected by the artists themselves. The straw is hand split and separated in order to produce geometric designs that will then go on top of a cross or other pieces that the artist chooses to ornamentate. Encrusted straw is different in that it is straw that is suspended in a pine pitch resin. It is then sealed and will develop a beautiful patina over the years. Straw applique is the other technique that is used that is unlike anything else. It is glued on in a geometric pattern. The artist understands the importance of light and reflection in the production of their straw applique work. Straw applique is widely known as poor man's gold because of its luminosity and how it appears to have a gold-like quality. 
Patricia Gallegriego creates beautiful straw applique crosses. In this particular piece titled Cruz de Jerusalem, she is able to use straw in a manner that shows contrast to the black base that she's laid down prior to applying the straw itself. Charlie Sanchez also uses the straw applique method, but in difference uses gesso material as well as natural pigments in the production of his pieces. The straw is more of an accent to these elements. His daughter, Vanessa Sanchez, also uses the same technique of straw applique and incorporates the use of gesso and natural pigments on her crosses, thus giving her the availability to produce varied results. In this particular piece, she has placed a piece of mica, which is a natural mineral, in a relic-like setting in the center of the cross. Vanessa Sanchez is also innovative in that she uses imagery with straw applique. It is not uncommon to see this particular style on many of the straw artists' work. It is quite difficult to achieve detail using straw applique, so some artists will even go as far as using corn husk. In addition to using imagery in straw applique, there is also the innovative technique of using colored straw applique, in which the artists will dye their straw in order to achieve different results. This particular piece by Judy Vados Long is representative of that method of using colored straw in their compositions. This is an encrusted straw cross by Jimmy Trujillo. Jimmy Trujillo is known for using various types of imagery within a singular piece. In this particular piece of encrusted straw, on the top you'll see an image of the Holy Spirit or the dove. On each side of the cross on the arms, you'll see a representation of a cruciform that shows rays coming out. On the opposite side, there are no rays. This is a depiction of the final crucifixion scene in which one of the thieves asks to be taken into heaven and the other does not. Jimmy Trujillo is known for using various types of imagery in his work in order to discuss the themes of iconography. One such theme is the Sacred Heart of Mary in which seven swords are piercing the heart. In this particular instance, Jimmy Trujillo has used colored straw. Beneath that is a depiction of a grapevine that shows the various traditional religious elements such as the straw, symbolic of the bread, and the grapes, which are symbolic of the blood or wine. At the very foot of the cross, there is also a representation of the crown of thorns in addition to the three nails that were used in the crucifixion. The seven blood drops are also representative of the seven sorrows of Mary. Jimmy Trujillo is known as the godfather of encrusted straw technique. This original way of producing straw inlay is used by the collecting of pinon sap resin from the pine tree found locally here in New Mexico. This resin is first layered and then the straw encrusted into that layer and sealed with a final coat of pine pitch. This cross by Martha Vados Ewing is titled Flor de Oro. Here, Martha has chosen to combine two media, poor man's silver, or tin as we call it, and poor man's gold, which is the straw applique that she has produced on the cross itself. Straw applique artists have an opportunity to play with the different hues of straw that they are able to find. Judy Vados Long, who is also an accomplished straw artist in her own right, had chosen to depict the Stations of the Cross, including the 15th Station, which is the Resurrection of Christ. This particular piece is incredible in that the contrast between the straw and the black background allows the viewer to see each scene uniquely. This is a tabernacle of sorts that opens and closes and functions as a devotional piece of work. This beautiful jewelry box titled Caja de Tosoros is by Martha Vados Ewing. Martha enjoys using mixed media in her pieces. This is meant to be a utilitarian piece of work in that it can be used as a jewelry box. The handles themselves are made of tin, whereas the main handles that carry the box are forged out of iron a collaboration between her and her husband. Another lesser known traditional art form is that of the ramilletes, or paper flowers. These traditional paper flowers were made in colonial times as accents for altars. Today, artists use innovative techniques in producing ramilletes. 
One method of producing ramayetas is taking a ribbon and placing multiple flower adornments on that ribbon. Using beads or other types of papers from various sources such as wallpaper or old recycled documents, these paper adornments are beautiful accents to altars and other home spaces. One of the traditional art forms that is also in the exhibition is the production of micaceous clay vessels. Debi Carrillo, who is from Abiquiu, New Mexico, produces beautiful micaceous clay representations using various techniques and methods, one of which is adding red slip to the rim of her micaceous pots. Debi produces numerous styles of micaceous pottery, whether it's cups, plates, or jugs, these beautiful luminescent micaceous clay vessels are luminous to light. Ironwork is a traditional art form that is found in New Mexico. Used for utilitarian purposes, ironwork served a purpose in colonial times, whether it was for horseshoes, dresser drawer pools, or other utilitarian needs. Ironwork has always been a mainstay in culture. Today, Larry Madrid uses ironwork in an innovative fashion whether he's constructing a bouquet of roses, or crosses, or tortilla warmers, Larry Madrid has found a way to be innovative within the medium of ironwork. The ironwork that Larry Madrid produces offers very unique patinas. Precious metals are an important part of traditional Spanish colonial New Mexico. The silver itself is a very scarce medium, but when found, it is used in a very special way. Whether it's used to accent santos or carvings, whether it's used to produce jewelry, crosses, brooches, and bracelets, silver is a beautiful medium that is highly valuable and very collected. Retablos can be fashioned in any manner, whether it's large scale or small scale. These miniature retablos are representative of devotional pieces that can be used and carried along the way. Typically, a small miniature santo was placed in a bolsa or leather sack and used for traveling purposes. Ben Lopez is known as a contemporary Hispanic artist. Ben uses a variety of materials in order to construct beautiful crosses. Many of these materials are found whether it's on the farm or on the side of the road. Ben uses barbed wire in order to construct images of Christ crucified on the cross. Oftentimes, he'll also use copper ornamentation on his crosses. Although weaving is predominantly thought of as a Native American art form, it has its traditions in the Spanish colonial era as well. Rita Padilla Hoffman is one of the foremost excellent weavers working today. Rita takes pride in the production of her natural dyes that she produces at home. Whether it's using various recipes or methods, Rita Padilla Hoffman produces exquisite weavings that are hand spun using Truro wool. Typically, you will find her signature at the bottom of her pieces, represented by a stocking-like shape. This is an ode to her family producing stockings in the colonial era. Included in the exhibition are two phenomenal furniture makers, Andrew Garcia and Randy Trujillo. Furniture making is a utilitarian art form in which furniture is typically used on a day-to-day -day basis. The Spanish colonial tradition of furniture making goes back to the early 1800s. Today, artists incorporate a variety of methods in producing furniture. And like that of the Santeros, furniture makers also learn their craft in an apprenticeship style. Furniture makers have their own distinct way of producing their work, whether it is through their formulated varnishes or their intricate ways of carving. Randy Trujillo is one of the up-and-coming furniture makers working today. He'll often incorporate ironwork into his furniture. This chest, for example, is completed using the dovetail method. It's also a chest that's used for storing blankets. Randy Trujillo can produce works that are simple, and complex. For example, in the exhibition we have the Vergueño de Cruz, or Desk of the Cross. This particular piece opens up to show various compartments that can be used to store papers and other materials needed in order to write. 
Randy Trujillo's composition of the Vergueño de la Cruz is an ode to the historic pieces that were constructed in the colonial era of New Mexico. Andrew Garcia has two incredible pieces of furniture in the exhibition, one of which is a buffet-style piece of furniture that is intricately carved and patinaed. This piece includes highly stylized circular motifs on each door with ironwork hinges that are attached. Andrew Garcia's Rastero is also an intricately carved piece that has multiple drawers and has a hand adds technique that is used on the interior of the Trastero. I've enjoyed sharing this incredible exhibition with you. These art forms represent a very important part of New Mexico culture. We've been able to showcase traditional and contemporary artists working today who represent various parts of our heritage. Our aim has been to share these art forms with you so that you can continue to explore them on your own. Thank you for joining us on this tour of Ayer, Hoy y Mañana.